everybody and welcome to a very special board gaming video. Today I'm going to be talking about everybody's favorite superhero team, Marvel's Avengers. That's right, today I'm going to be talking about what I think our superheroes and heroines favorite board games are. And I'm going to be doing it in horrendously bad cosplay. So everybody buckle up, it's going to be a really fun but very bumpy ride. During my training in the Red Room, we were never allowed to have any fun. All it was was all training all the time. If we weren't training, then we were being hurt in order to train more later on. It was a terrible existence, and nowadays I found that I'm able to at least exact a slight, slight little bit of revenge against the ex-union by playing some games. That's right, there are plenty of games that allow you to fight against communism in numerous different ways. My personal favorite is the lighthearted one of Red November. You're a bunch of dwarves, essentially, and you're trying to get off of a sinking submarine. That's right, it's a fun little game, but you can end up backstabbing each other, so naturally, it's a great fit for our little group here. Secondly, and most importantly, my personal favorite, Twilight Struggle. Twilight Struggle is the ultimate strategy game of good versus evil, the US blue versus the communist red. And every single time, I have to go against the communists. I have to. It's just a fact. There's no way around it. Although unfortunately, Cap also insists on going against the communists. So normally we have to fight to see who does. Either way, I should do it all the time. Fighting against the communists, Twilight Struggle, Red November, anything else. That's what I am all about. And sometimes, on very special occasions, I'll play as the Reds, just to make Cat mad. Hey there, uh, everybody. Uh, how are you doing? Uh, but before I really get started with this, is it really necessary for me to be wearing this shirt? Do, do people not know who I am? I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous that this is just going to make the other guy want to come out. Um, you know, just, just a little Bunch bit. Cuts. I'm, uh, yeah, oh. Okay. So, uh, for, for those of you who, who know me, I hope that you all know me. I, I have a little bit of an anger issue, uh, so to speak. I got it mostly under control. But, uh, you know, the, the other guy, he does like to come out now and then. And uh, more, more often than not, I can at least control uh, to an extent. But uh, the last thing that I want is, you know, we're all sitting around a table having a good time playing a nice little game. And uh, suddenly the other guy comes out and, uh, you know, wails on Tony a little bit. Um, not that that hasn't happened before, but, you know, he's a good sport about it. Uh, but anyway, uh, my, my favorite types of games are the ones where we don't have to do that. It's not, you know, cutthroat, we're not after each other, all that kind of stuff. I prefer the, uh, the, the games like, uh, like this one, like Pandemic. Pandemic is one of my personal favorite games, obviously. I, I'm a scientist, I enjoy the science behind it. I like uh, doing the work and showing the work and, um, you know, just the little stuff like that. But most importantly, the fact that we get to work as a team. I mean, you know, we work out, we work out there as a team. We can work in here as a team as well. And it just, it makes everything meld a lot better, I think. Um, it just makes more sense, and it means that the other guy is uh, just a, 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 at least a little bit more calm. But uh, really, any uh, cooperative, you know, fun game like that, even if it's on teams, you know, we do war games and things of that nature, uh, that, that's perfectly fine. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Pandemic just really speaks to me as a scientist. I get to, you know, keep my brain a little bit sharp, you know, think about uh, how things are going and what we're doing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, just a, a really fun game. I, I definitely like it. Uh, probably my, my favorite of all. So, can I, can I take the shirt off now? Absolutely. Thanks for being such a good sport about it. Hey there, folks. So, for me, I'm not really that much of a board gamer, but apparently that's what we're talking about today for whatever reason. Uh, so I figured I would indulge myself and indulge you all as well. Uh, but... Uh, I thought to myself, you know, what, where can I find games? So I, I asked Jarvis to look up a few games for me, and he actually found some very, very interesting ones that I was very excited about. I'm really excited to share with you guys. And uh, the first one is actually called, What Is He Building In There? And I was just like, I don't know what it is, but something about this game speaks to me. I, I invent stuff. You guys know that. You guys know who I am. I, I invent stuff. I build things. I perfect things. I build everything that we use. So what better game to play than what is he building in there? And I, I thought to myself, this was actually combined really, really well with a couple of other games that I found. One, one of which is right here. This one right here, Ricochet Robots. 
So I thought to myself, what is he building in there? He's building a bunch of robots for Ricochet Robots, right? So you build up all the robots. This actually has infinite number of players that you can have. So just imagine, you go in, you, you play the, what is he building in there? You build up a bunch of robots, right? And then you take them into Ricochet Robots, you just bounce them all around. It'd be great, it would be really fun. Now, obviously, you know, you need a couple little adjustments to the AI, but I think that if we really, really try, if I really, you know, just had some time to work on it, then I could really make these- No! Oh! No but, more robots. No more. No, no more robots. No more. Really? No more. Stop building robots. I still like the games. In the halls of mighty Asgard, we have no use for these things that you call games. However, I was delighted to find that here on Earth, you have successfully captured the great feel of being in my home realm. That's right. I have found many a game that portrays the great heroes of my myth and legend as well as my brothers and sisters and kin of all sorts. Today, I have Yggdrasil. Yggdrasil, the tree of knowledge from which my father hanged in order to gain the knowledge of the ancients. Now today, it is here in a, a box, a box that allows you humans to view the knowledge just as my father did. However, in this case, you get to do as I do and go and fight the giants and fight all manner of things, mythical and evil. Mortal human, why do I not have the box? Why do I have this flimsy piece of paper? That You'll see soon enough. Okay, fine. Regardless, Yggdrasil, wonderful game. Absolutely incredible correctly portrays the wondrousness of my family and my realm. Go out right now, immediately, and play it. Now, another! And that's why you have the paper. Ah. Hulk play! As you know, one of the most vital aspects of being a leader is to make certain that your team is ready at a moment's notice for any situation, any scenario. It is important that every single person on your team keeps a very sharp tactical mind at the ready. Board games are actually an amazing way to maintain that, and the problem is just getting everybody to sit down and do it. However. You don't necessarily need everybody, you only need a few people, but for my purposes, there are some absolutely incredible tactical games that will help us in any fight and many, many fights in the future. Chief amongst which are fights that make me somewhat nostalgic for my own time. Why is that? Why do I enjoy them? Because it gives me sort of a quiet reminisce period and a quiet nostalgia for everything that I hold dear, everything that I remember, every single reason why I became the hero that I am today and the leader that I know I am capable of being. First and foremost, one of my favorite games of my time is Axis and Allies. Obviously my time, meaning simply the time in which it is based. Axis and Allies is a wonderful game that is based off of World War II that shows all of the tactical importance of strategic planning as well as troop placement, all of which comes into play for us as a team, even if some people don't realize it as much as others. Now that said, this is an extremely complex game. Very few people actually enjoy playing it. I don't know why. Everybody should enjoy this. Everybody should be able to just sit down and play this. However, there's another game that actually greatly helps me learn a little bit about what has happened since I left. And that game is actually something that Widow and I share, which is Twilight Struggle. Twilight Struggle is the great battle between the communist Russians and the capitalist Americans. And obviously, who has to win? We do, of course. Now the problem is that sometimes Widow and I get in an argument over who gets to be who, but at the same time, it's not really that big of a deal because yeah, I normally get to play America. Now, the that, what? Yeah, sometimes she, she said likes what? being as the other side. She likes being the communist? Yes, yeah, she said that just a little while ago. Oh, Widow, what the heck? Language! Language. That's not even a bad word. It's close enough. It wasn't enough even a bad word when I was. I'm just saying. Oh, screw you, Tony. Screw you, Cap. Don't I get to talk about what I like to play? 
No! <gasps> okay. Thank you so very much for watching my video. Hey there everybody, Deadpool here. Hope that you are doing quite well. Incidentally, if you're worried about Danny, do not worry. He is only just a little bit maimed. Incidentally, what does Danny have in common with Batman? Give up? Well, it turns out that they're both regular people and very vulnerable to swords to the face. Who knew? Incidentally, there's a couple of his videos linked up at the top of the page, not Batman's, Danny's. And if you want to take a look at them, go on ahead. They're pretty cool. I like them. I'm looking through his computer right now. He's got a lot of cool stuff. Incidentally, he will be back in the next couple of weeks after he's been in the hospital for a little while. But until that time, make sure that you go ahead and click that big giant subscribe button so you can see when stuff is coming along. And also follow him on Twitter at DannyCGamingSci. I personally will not do it because I just follow him around as normal anyway. But either way, thank you guys so very much for watching. I know that you know my section was best, and hopefully I will see you all later on.